What's going on YouTube? Dragoon here. And it's been a little while since my last video. Sorry about that. I've been uh, pretty busy lately. But it's time for a new deck profile. And this time it's uh, not an Elemental Hero video. Don't worry, I'll still be, you know, working on those. However, um, I'm doing a deck profile of a deck that I've been kind of wanting to do for a while, but it just took me um, quite some time to get my hands on the newer cards, and I didn't want to start doing the deck profile until I had them. So this deck, obviously, as you can see, is Medolce. Um, just a bit of background, I've been playing Medolce since the sneak peek of Return of the Duelist when I pulled one of these, and so I went into the archetype blind, I really didn't know that they existed that much, and I just went to the Return of the Duelist sneak peek for fun, and I got one of these, and I got some of the other cards, so I'm like, okay, I'll just play these for the sneak peek, and I had tons of fun, and so I've been kind of uh, playing and building the deck uh, since then with each of the newer installments, uh, and so now I feel like it's finally good enough to kind of talk about and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just get started. So to start off, our first three monsters are three Medolce Modulane. Um, she is kind of like Stratos. When you summon her, uh, she gets to search a Medolce monster from your deck. Uh, it also works with flip summons instead of special summons. And she's only 1,400 attack points, so she's a little weaker, but um, she's still very good and very important in the deck, in my opinion. She just allows you to get to what you need as quickly as possible. Um, if you're not familiar with Medolce, I'm not going to talk too much about you know like com certain combos and stuff like that. I'll just talk about uh, the way the deck works is uh, each time one of your monsters is destroyed by your opponent, it gets shuffled back into your deck. So that's kind of how the monsters all work. But moving right along, we have three Medolce Mufie. This monster is integral. It's whenever it's normal summoned, you can special summon another Medolce from your hand. And it opens up a ton of plays with cards like this one. Three Medolce, Messengelato. When he's special summoned while you have a beast type Medolce on the field, most likely this card, or another that I'll show you in a minute, um, he gets to search a Medolce spell or trap card from your deck and add it to your hand. So he's very important. He's a major search player in this deck. The deck does a lot of searching, actually, and that's kind of what I like about it. Uh, he's 1600 attack, so he's actually the strongest monster in your main deck, and he's a warrior, so it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, really important card. He just provides a ton of versatility in the deck. The other card that you're going to special summon off of Mufie's effect uh, most often is Medolce Hootcake. This is the card that really gets the deck rolling. It's the card that, in my opinion, made the deck into kind of what it is. This card turns the deck into a big uh, heavy hitter with combos. Uh, Who Cakes effect is you can banish any monster from your graveyard and special summon a Medolce from the main deck that is not himself. So, um, as you can see, the, the effect is very good. It just you have to consider the fact that all these cards will shuffle themselves back into the deck when they're put into the graveyard. But we have certain ways to make sure this guy's effect um, is active. And he's also a beast, so when you're making your combos with Messengelato, you can get the effects with him as well, which is very good. Um, I don't play 3 Hoot Cake because I feel like I should be able to get to him relatively easily with the amount of cards in the deck that can uh, search for monsters and other cards. And he's not really a card that I like to have multiples of my hand or multiples of in my hand uh, early in the game simply because his effect really does require a little bit of setup to get those cards in the graveyard and I'd rather not have to sit on this little guy for a while. And he's only 1500 attack points so you just gotta kind of be careful. That's why I like to um, you should be able to get to him relatively easily, and yet you don't see him clogging as much. So that is that. And the very last Medolce monster of the deck is one Cruffsant. Um, you never want to draw this card. It's, it's a good card to play, 
but you just want to be able to search for it with your other cards. Um, it's good because it can activate some of your other cards. Its effect is you can uh, return a Medulce card from your side of the field to your hand to give him a 300 attack boost and a level boost by one. So he can become pretty versatile, but it's just a card that you don't, I guess, need. I mean, I guess you don't have to play this card. I still think it's important, but you just never, ever want to draw this, and that's why you only play one. And then our toolbox warriors, I suppose, is TG Striker and Spell Striker. Uh, TG Striker is there to act as a tuner monster. I felt like when you consider that all of these cards are all Earth cards, um, I just thought it was a missed opportunity if I was not playing TG Striker. He's easy to special summon when your opponent has a monster and you don't, and you can just go ahead and normal summon one of your other cards and go ahead and go for a synchro summon. Uh, just a one-off card. You don't need to synchro summon in this deck. It's not obviously made for synchro summoning. Um, I just feel like it's a nice opportunity to be able to play one of these. And because it blends so well with every other card in the deck. Spell Striker is also Earth, and he's level 3, so he gives you uh, more access to combos with plenty of your other level 3 cards. He's level 3, can be a pseudo level 4, and anything above. 3s and 3s, so... Um, plus, he's a special summon monster, which is not too hard to get out. So, a pretty cool card. I like just one of each, and it works out pretty well. They're all they're both searchable, which is pretty nice. It just adds a little more versatility. And the last of the monsters of the deck are Hand Traps. We've got two Effect Veiler and two Max C. Uh, Max C is, in a way, better than Effect Veiler right now. Although, I don't really plan on going into any really large scale events right now so this works out just fine for me i don't i don't have a third max the otherwise i consider playing it over like maybe one of the effect failures but i do like two and two um it just works out it's these are easy cards to put into the graveyard for who kick especially maxi because you can use it on your turn if you you don't want to do that but if you can like if you have to you can just discard maxi to make who kick alive um sometimes it's a problem but other times it it doesn't really matter too much. They're very good, and Effect Failure is a, a tuner, so you can use it in that regard as well if it comes down to it. Alright, so that's all the monsters. On to the spells. Most important spell cards in the game, or in the deck. <laughs> two Medulce Chateau, and two Medulce Ticket. Chateau is your field spell. It gives each of them a 500 attack and defense boost, and it also makes it so if one of them would be returned to the deck from the grave by their own effect, you can return it to your hand instead, which is really good. It just gives you massive advantage because your monsters never really go away with this on the field as long as you can do it properly. And that's also when it's activated, it shuffles every Medulce monster from your grave into your deck, which can be a good or a bad thing depending on um, the situation you're in. Medulce Ticket is kind of like uh, your... Black Whirlwind or your Wind-Up Factory, in the sense that when a Medulce monster is shuffled uh, into the deck or added to your hand by, like, Ticket, I mean, by, like, Chateau, you can add one Medulce monster from your deck to your hand. And if you have a Fairy Medulce, you can Special Summon instead. So, both very important cards. I don't like playing three of them because I don't want them to clog. And, like I said, Messengelato can search for both of these, and typically his effect is not too difficult to get off. So, um, you just have multiple opportunities to get to these cards. Although there are some times when I do wish I like had a third Chateau, and I do side one, but side decks are kind of player preference in my opinion, and depending on where you're playing. Alright, so we've got two pots of duality, this is pretty obvious, it just helps you get to what you need more quickly. Uh, the deck special summons a lot, but you don't have to special summon every turn, you can just summon a Modulane. Search and then just you know activate this, get that other piece of the combo, and then just have it ready for next turn. It just sets you up and it's very good. We've got two double summon in case they veil your cards. Um, this can allow you to make game changers. You can go for Shockmaster really easily with this card. Um, it just allows you to pull through when you really need it. Um, there's not a whole lot you can say about it. it. Just gives you an additional normal summon, which is very good in this deck because a lot of your effects activate. Via normal summons, who sometimes create special summons, like me if you had. 
And then we've got one reinforcement of the army and one dark hole. Uh, this is actually really good because if sometimes you may need a dark hole your own monster to make uh, a monster in the graveyard for hoot cake. And, you know, it's it's not always the worst thing in the world if you've got, like, a Maji lane and your opponent's got a couple monsters. You can just activate this and then make some plays. It's pretty good because um, there are times when you just really do need a monster in the graveyard. And this is your search card. Like I said, it searches for Mess and Gelato. It searches for TG Striker and Spell Striker, so it's pretty versatile. And then the last spell cards are uh, Heavy Storm and three Mystical Space Typhoon. Because I, because the deck, like I said, is combo-oriented, I do not want to lose to whatever my opponent has face down. You may think Heavy Storm is not a very uh, good card in the deck because of the field spell, because of ticket and stuff like that. Um, but obviously I'm just not going to activate it if I already have those cards on the field. If I've already got a pretty sufficient um, amount of spells and traps, I can just save this for later and... It's really not that big of a deal, honestly, because if I have all that stuff, I'm probably already in a uh, winning position. And this is just good. You just, like I said, you just deal with things on the spot. So, yeah, that's that. Under the traps, we've got Solemn Warning and Solemn Judgment. Uh, these are pretty obvious. Uh, we've got two Threatening Roar. I like this card because... Um, with, via the extra deck, you can kind of deal with things if you have that extra turn, and Threatening Roar is massively chainable, so you can just activate this when they go to destroy it with whatever it may be, and you can keep your monsters alive, and that's kind of important in this deck, is to, if you can't do a good play in one turn, you can typically do one in two turns, and this provides the means to do so. And then for just some basic removal, we've got two Bottomless Trap Hole, and two Torrential Tribute. Uh, pretty obvious card choices here. Just helps you deal with your opponent's monsters. And turn to Tribute can work in the sense, uh, like I talked about Dark Hole, putting a, one of your own monsters in the graveyard um, to fuel Hoot Cake's effect. And our last card is Starlight Road because we play a ton of spells and traps and we don't like Heavy Storm. Uh, you can even use this with your own Heavy Storm. Okay, on to the extra deck. The rank 3s are number 30, Acid Golem of Destruction. Levy are the Sea Dragon, Wind Up Zen Mines, and MX Saber Invoker. These two are your big combo pieces. This is your defense, this is your offense. What you're going to do is you're going to use this. And like I said, I'm not going to get too big into the combo, but you use him typically to uh, get Messenger Lotto, and you can go from there. And this can get any of your level 4s, is what you typically go for with Levy Air. But you can, like I said, always do other things with the cards rather than what you are kind of playing them for. But, uh, yeah, they're all very important to the deck and essential to play, in my opinion. We've got one Shockmaster. It just helps you deal with really annoying things. You can call spells, call monster effects. That's typically what you're going to do. Uh, very good card. You've got the main uh, rank four. It's Medulce Queen Tiramisu. She is what makes the whole deck pretty much do what it needs to do. Her effect is that she can uh, target up to two Medulce cards in your graveyard, shuffle those in the deck, and then uh, shuffle the same amount of cards on your opponent's side of the field uh, into their deck. So she's very, very good. She helps you deal with tons of things, especially Xyz and stuff like that. And she just really makes the deck work. She's the card that Pretty, she and Hoot Cake are pretty much what make the deck good, in my opinion. And we've just got some more basic rank fours to help you deal with various situations. Gaga Ga, Ga, Cowboy, uh, Maestro the Symphony Jin, number 50, Black Shift Corn, Abyss Dweller, and uh, Blade Armor Ninja. You do play the Warriors, and you can OTK with this card, so that's why I like to play it. Um, you don't have to play it, though. It's kind of up to you, but I think Blade Armor Ninja is pretty good in the deck. And the last three monsters of the extra deck are Synchros. We have Stardust Dragon for the Starlight Road, though you can make it with your monsters um, if you really need to, but it's pretty much just for Starlight Road. And your most important Synchros are Naturia Beast and Naturia Barkeon. This is just a proxy for it right now. Um, I wanted to get Naturia Barkeon before I made this video, but it just 
going to happen, and I didn't really want to make you guys wait anymore. So, yeah, uh, these are very, very important. They're both made of earth monsters. Naturia Beast effect allows you to uh, mill the top two cards of your graveyard to, or of your deck to the graveyard to uh, negate the activation of a spell card and destroy it, uh, which is very, very good, especially against spell books. And uh, Barkeon has the same effect, though you banish two cards from your grave to negate a trap card. So, obviously, these cards are very important. It's why I placed TG Striker, because I feel like these two synchros are way too good to just not play when the entire deck is Earth. But, uh, yeah, that's the deck, you guys. Uh, let me know what you think uh, in the comments, and we will catch you later.